Hey, welcome guys. Thanks for joining us today in the Wells Tech Garage for this week's episode of Counterpoint. I'm joined here by Adam from our product department. Thanks yeah, for th being here, yeah, Adam. Thanks for having me. So today we are going to be talking about universal fuel tank selector valves. That's it. And uh, basically today we're going we're to be pushing on the FSV2K. Okay, an so. FSV2K. Okay. What does K stand for, everyone may ask? It's for a kit. <laughs> Okay. So let's let's kind of bring this out here and see what we have. So this is our FSV2. Yes, this is. But we uh, first of all we have this uh, basic looking valve. Fuel uh, selector valve. Yeah. Okay. This is the big thing with the kit though. Pigtail. Okay, and that's required to install it this is. thing. And a required toggle switch. Required toggle switch. You know, the okay. Big, the big thing here is this is a universal kit. Right. Okay. So, uh, universal for Ford, Ford Chevy. GM. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so. from the what year range is roughly? Uh, 70s into mid 90s. Okay. Ford ran that uh, you know, dual tank system to I think 95. All right. And that's 96, that, 96, that's a good point. Yeah. For those of you guys that don't know what a fuel tank selector valve is for, it's for those dual tank systems where you have a main tank and a, an auxiliary tank, and it needs to be able to switch between the two. That's what this valve is intended to do. Exactly. With some installation. Yes, because it is universal. It so. is universal. So guys, Adam's going to get the instruction yeah, sheet out here. This is the big thing here. This, this is, is universal. It is a lengthy instruction sheet. Exactly. You can see how long it is. You have to be comfortable with doing electrical. Mm -hmm. You have to be comfortable doing, working with fuel. Right. And uh, you know, if you're not, recommend taking it to a qualified yeah. uh, mechanic. Take to it to your this. qualified mechanic because yeah. uh, yeah, we're working with uh, you know potentially dangerous components exactly. here with fuel and electrical. We got to know what we're doing, or else uh, you know bad things could happen. Exactly. So if you're not comfortable, take it in or give us a call and maybe we can uh, you know walk you through it, help you feel comfortable. Yeah, we'd be glad to help you. But um, let's talk a little bit on this part here. We got a bunch of uh, bunch of uh, little nipples on here that you're going to attach um, hose to. Mm -hmm. But now this has what one, two, three, four, five, six lines on it. We also have a different one too, right? It's, yep, exactly. When the return lines aren't required, uh, you have an FSV1. Okay, FSV1. K or FSV1. Okay, so that an FSV1 is for a return list system. It's exactly. a system that doesn't have a return fuel line. Mm -hmm. This FSV2K is for a return style fuel That's system. Right. Okay. So. And we say fuel system because it's intended for gasoline or diesel. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know and the big thing too is it's not marine rated. Okay, it's so not marine rated. Can't use it on that. Okay. And, then, and the other thing when installing is, uh, mm -hmm. it'll be it's, it's set up in the instructions is also on a caution label. Is right. It's, uh, you need a fuel filter. You need a fuel filter, and you want to keep it under 65, 65 psi, PSI fuel pressure. That's all this is rated for. Um, we're going to talk about the fuel filters here in a second. Um, but other on the caution thing here is read the instructions before installing. Exactly. So obviously you want to read we through this. That. You can look at it on our website too. Yep. If you want to get kind of a heads up you beforehand. Could. And, uh, yep. and, and you can watch our video. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> this is good to pull out of the box when you guys are at the store because you're going to have some other components, some other pieces that you have to buy to go along with this universal kit. Mm -hmm. We included you know, the valve and the connector or pigtail mm -hmm. and the switch, but there's more needed because we can't supply everything for every vehicle. Exactly. You're going to need hose, you're going to need clamps, you're going to need wire and maybe some heat shrinkable butt connectors or shrink wrap, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of times we get calls on this down in the tech department and it's going to be related to the installation of this thing. That's right. You know, somebody looks at the instructions, they're confused, maybe the diagram isn't um, making sense, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, electrical can be just confusing it can on be. a whole. I mean, it can be. So we like to talk them through the um, installation. So I guess I'm going to just take a minute here and kind of do a brief explanation of how you would install this thing on your, uh, on your vehicle. That'd be great. Okay, let's start on the fuel side. Let's start with, um, you know, connecting our hoses to this, back to our fuel pumps, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. First of all, we need to be using fuel injection hose. Now, we're not going to use vacuum hose or EVAP line or anything like that. It has to be fuel rated, fuel injection pressure hose. It's got to be rated for pressure and fuel. So when you're asking for your hose at the store, ask for fuel injection hose. For the fuel supply line, it's gonna be a 3 8 diameter. For the return line, it's gonna be 5 16 So fuel injection hose. Now, to install that hose onto here, it's gonna need a clamp. You gotta tighten it down. Don't just buy the universal worm clamp type exactly. of things. It can cause damage to the hose and might not give you a tight connection. You wanna buy those, um, 
specific fuel injection hose clamps. You do not want leaks. <laughs> exactly, you don't want fuel leaking. No. Those clamps just give you a more secure connection and they don't tear into the hose and create leaks. So fuel injection clamps, fuel injection hose. You're gonna run your hoses off of this thing back to a universal fuel filter going to each pump. So each pump has to have its own fuel filter installed in line. Otherwise, you could void the warranty. Mm -hmm. And that's just, you know, common sense to keep all the uh, dirt, debris, anything that might be in the pump or mm -hmm. in the tank out, out of, of the new valve. selector valve. Because, you know, you plug this thing up, it's not going to work. Not work. So fuel filter, you can just buy a universal fuel filter, install it in line between the pump and the selector valve. Tighten all your clamps down, mm -hmm. make sure you have no leaks, you know, just maybe add a small amount of fuel first, make sure you have no leaks, that kind of thing, mm -hmm. before you go refilling the tank or anything like that. But remember guys, we're messing with fuel here, so again, if you don't feel comfortable with it, take it to a qualified technician. So, that's the fuel lines connecting to this thing, and each one is called out in the diagram of where you would connect each hose to, to wherever it's going. Mm -hmm. So you, that's all called out in there. Now, let's talk the electrical side of things, hooking the, <coughs> excuse me, hooking up the uh, power ground, you know, switching, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Now, on our diagram, the switch, or excuse me, the connector is laid out, but it's, it's a little confusing, you know, we have five black wires here. Yes. And, uh, you know, it can get confusing on what to hook up to what. So, if you go out to our website, wellsve.com, type in FSV2K, and go under the miscellaneous tab, you can find this diagram here that has a direct layout of everything of what you have to do. So you can see your connector illustrated with each, um, each terminal labeled of what it's controlling. Mm -hmm. You look down a little further, you can see the, the uh, valve there, the switching valve, um, and it's calling out this no hose connection. I think this is kind of interesting and just very good to bring up. Mm -hmm. This little hole right here that's really close to the connector isn't for anything. It's just part of the manufacturing mm -hmm. process. So don't go connecting a hose to this. There's nothing that has to go on this small hose that's right next to the connector. Also called out in that picture. And then if we look a little lower, you can see an actual image of the connector with each pin being labeled. Um, and then a little note, this is not a solenoid. This is just a valve. Um, and to run the servo motor, you have to reverse the polarity. So just keep that in mind, guys. That's the whole point of this wiring process is to reverse polarity. So we plug the connector in. It's time to run our wires. Obviously, we got to run some wires back to our fuel pumps to turn those on. Um, that's all called out in the diagram. Then we got to run some wires up to the front of the vehicle. So we're going to connect um, some 18 gauge or greater wiring to this. So 18, 16, 14, 12. Remember, as we decrease in gauge size, we're actually increasing in the wire size. Um, you don't want to be using anything too small because it can't handle the load. So 18 gauge or greater wiring heading back up to the front of the vehicle and eventually taking us to our toggle, toggle switch. switch. And the reason why we have to use this toggle switch is again, it's universal. Mm -hmm. Your old switch that's in the dash isn't going to work. You have to install a new one and this is where most of our questions come in is installing this thing because the diagram is a little bit confusing. So I went ahead and wired one up. I used some eyelets and some 18 gauge red and black wiring, and you'll see it looks kind of funny. It does. You, know, you don't normally see a switch with some crossed over elements here, but that's exactly what our diagram is calling out. We're jumping kitty corner, the power and the ground, so that we can reverse the polarity on our switch. So you can see ground to the other side and then a, a wire coming out of it, mm -hmm. and power over to the other side and a wire coming out of it. I used red and black to just signal power and ground. So this, by doing this, this is the proper way. This is going to allow you to feed power or ground in and then reverse it when you flip the switch. And then the two center pins are going to be the uh, wiring the back to the uh, pigtail, which is also called out in the diagram. Okay. From our switch, we want to run our black wire, our ground wire, back to some sort of ground, mm -hmm. clean, bare metal, chassis ground, you know, that kind of thing. Something that's going to give you a nice, steady, consistent ground connection. And then our uh, power, we want to feed back to a steady power supply. Now, we don't want to be jumping into some other fuse, something like that. Remember, guys, when manufacturers design a car, they're using the exact gauge wire that is required on that circuit. If you uh, go adding in another load to that circuit, you can cause issues. You can blow your fuse, you know, melt down wiring, melt connectors, that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Be careful. Yes. Run this back to the battery. That's going to be your best bet. 
but don't go directly to the battery with your power lead. Make sure you put protection in the circuit. So you can pick up a little fuse jumper wire like mm -hmm. this. And all you're gonna do is install one leg of it right onto the power side of the battery. Attached, yeah. And the other leg to the to power, power side of the switch. And put a 10 amp protection. fuse. Yep, and you have your protection. And your circuit's protected. Mm -hmm. You know, if this thing were to short to ground, if you were to run into any sort of issues, your circuit's protected and it'll blow the fuse immediately. So once it's all said and done, you can uh, flip your switch, should flip over your uh, valve, and you should be able to run your main pump or your auxiliary pump and tank, mm -hmm. no problem. Um, one thing to, to uh, note is if you leave this thing on the main tank when you go shut the vehicle off, turn it back on the next morning, it's still gonna be on the main tank. It doesn't reset, it doesn't go switching between tanks unless you, uh, you know, switch the toggle. Exactly. So I think that's probably yeah, about that's it for the installation. Exactly. Um, you know, you are gonna need tools. You know, a wire stripper, screwdriver, you know, a drill to drill a hole in the dash, that kind of thing. Um, so this is a, a lengthy process. And the knowledge. There's and the knowledge to be safe right. and install safe. correctly. Yep, exactly. Safety so. is key. Yes. If you're not comfortable with it, don't do it. Take it into a shop, have a shop do it because, you know, we're messing with fuel and electricity here, guys. So just be careful. That's right. Can't stress okay. that enough. I think that is about it for today, guys. Um, if you look below in the comments, I'm going to include just a quick little, uh, let's call it a shopping list, exactly. so you, when you're at your parts store, you uh, make sure you don't leave there without having all the parts that you need, because obviously we can only supply the necessary components from our end, but your vehicles are all going to be different, so um, you do need to pick up some other stuff. So yeah. I think that's about it for today. That's all I have. All right, well, thanks for being there, guys. We really appreciate it, and we'll see you guys again next time in the Wells Tech Garage.